Hi, this is Lori, and welcome to Episode 4 on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Today we're going to use LEDs to create a binary counter. We're going to create a project where we count in binary using LEDs and turning them on and off to indicate the binary number. So let's review uh, numbers we're very familiar with, decimal numbers. In decimal we have 10 symbols, 0 through 9, and when we go to count, we start at 0, we get all the way up to 9, and we run out of symbols. What we do is we go back to 0 and we add a 1 to the left to continue, 10, 11, 12. Now with binary, we only have two symbols, a 0 and a 1. So 0, 1, we run out of symbols, we do the same thing. We go back to 0 and we add a 1 to the left. Now this is the next number and the next and the next. So you can see we're going to rotate very quickly through our symbols and continue to add um, places to the left. In this table, I have the first 16 decimal numbers starting at 0. And then we're going to show the binary equivalent of those. And we talked about that. We'll start here, 0, 1. We've run out of symbols, so now we have to add 1 over uh, to the left to get to 2. And then to get to 3, we go to the 1. But now we've run out of symbols, so we add 1 to the left, and now we've made 4. And we keep going. And you can see that there's this uh, wonderful pattern in binary numbers. It's quite beautiful, I think. You can see we're going to rotate in the first place, and we call this the ones place. Then the next place is the twos, the fours, and the eights. And you'll see as we convert between decimal and binary, binary and decimal, we use these places, ones, twos, fours, and eights. Um, so you can see we, we rotate through quickly in the ones place. We do every two in the twos place. We do every four in the fours and eight and eight in the eights place to get all the way up to 15 where we have one, 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 one. Now converting between binary and decimal. For example, let's take the number, binary number 1101 and we ask what's that a decimal equivalent? Well, we use these places to figure that out. So we have a one in the eights place, a one in the fours, a zero in the two, and a one in the ones. We do all that multiplication and add it up and we get 13 in decimal. And if you look in the table, you'll see, yes, 1101 is 13. For our project, we're going to take four LEDs and connect them up to our Pico to represent the one, two, four, and eights place. And as we count, we're going to go through zero, one, and we're going to light the LED for the place as we do the counting. So for example, when we get to three, we'll have the ones place LED on, the twos place LED on, but the four and eights place LED will be off. And we'll use that, we'll keep going through zero, one, two, three. We'll be turning on and off the proper LED uh, to symbolize the binary number. This is the circuit we'll use for this project. We'll put our Pico W onto the breadboard and you may notice that I slid the Pico W down a little bit so that it's not symmetric across the divide because I wanted to create more space to make connections on this side of the Pico. I'm going to place the four LEDs that we'll use for the counter and each of them needs to be connected up to a GPIO pin on the Pico W. Then we'll take the negative side of the LED, connect it to the current limiting resistor that will jump across the divide to make a separate connection to this side of the board, which will then get connected to ground. Now you notice I connected this side to create the ground rail and I knew that this third pin over was a ground because I used my pinout diagram to see, yes, there's a ground right here on this side. And so that's how I knew uh, where the ground was to create the rail on this side of the Pico W. Here's my circuit on the breadboard. 
see the Pico W, the four LEDs, the resistors coming across the divide, and connecting up to the ground rail, which was created off of the third spot on this side of the Pico. And you can see all the wires connecting the positive side of the LED back to the appropriate GPIO pin on the Pico. I'm going to present two programs to do the binary counter. One is a beginner type program and one is a more advanced program. Let's start off with the beginner. In the beginner program, we'll do what we've done to set up our LEDs before, except for now we'll have four of them. So we'll need to import the pin, the sleep function. We're going to set up a delay time to uh, say how long we want those lights to show as we count through the numbers. And we want it to show for a little while. I've picked two seconds, but maybe go to one. Um, you don't want to go too fast so you can't, or you won't be able to see it, right? So we'll set up the four LEDs as outputs. And I've named them the ones place, the twos place, the fours place, and the eights place, just as we talked about in the slide on the binary counter and binary numbers. Then to make sure uh, that all the LEDs start off, we'll just turn them all off right from the start. And then we'll go into our while true loop. And we'll just go through and print each number, or light each number from our LEDs. And we're going to print the number we're going for, so both the binary and the decimal version of it. And then we'll set the LEDs to the on and off for that number. So you can see with 0000, zero, zero, zero they should all be off. And when we'll sleep for that delay time, go to the next number. That'll be 0001. Zero, zero, one. So we'll light the ones place, we'll turn that one on, but everything else will stay off and we'll sleep the delay time. With this approach, we're going to need to put every number in. And you can see it's very simple. Just Keep putting the ons and offs, and you can copy and paste to make this happen. It doesn't take very long to do the program this way, and it works. It works perfectly, and it'll just keep looping through 0 to 15 in binary over and over again until we click the stop button. Time to run the program and see how it works. We'll kick it off here, and we should start seeing it count. And you'll also notice it is printing on the screen in the shell as well, which helps a little bit for just checking and making sure that you've got it right. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and back to zero. Works perfectly. Now I'm going to share a more advanced program to do the binary counter. And as you do the beginning program, you might feel like you're kind of doing the same sort of steps over and over again as you move through the numbers. And whenever that sort of thing happens to you, you should start thinking there must be a more efficient way to do this that might take less code. And usually when it's repetitive like that, some kind of a loop would be the right way to go. In this advanced program, I'm going to use what's called a for loop to move through the binary numbers as we count. Let's take a look. All of the setup is the same. And then we come in to our while true loop. And I've also added something to this program because when you stop the beginner program, sometimes the lights will stay on wherever you stopped it at. And that can be a little frustrating just to have lights on just sitting there. So we want to have a clean way to exit the program. The try and accept will allow us to do that. So in the try part, we'll put our code for the program. And the accept part, we say accept on keyboard interrupt, which is control C. If we press Control C, we'll jump down to this part of the code and turn all the LEDs off and end the program. So that's what the try and accept do. Now we'll come into our while true loop and we'll start a for loop. Well, we're trying to count between 0 and 15 
And if we use a for loop, we can say my num is in this range, going from 0 to 15 by 1. You say 16 here. It, this range only goes up to one number less than that. So that's why it says 16, and it will get us up to 15 and then stop when it gets to 16. And it'll go by ones. 1, 2, 3, 4. There we have the number in decimal form. And for my mind, and I've done this, uh, this project in several uh, forms in Arduino and in a Raspberry Pi, I always think there's some way in most programming languages to switch between different forms of a number. So I have the decimal form in the for loop as my num, and I need to turn my num into a binary number. And there's usually some sort of function or format that will allow me to do that in a, in a language. So I just search around until I find it, and that's what I did here. I'm creating the binary number from my my num, the decimal form of it, and I'm saying I want a binary number, that's what the B means here, and I need four places because I want 0, 0, 0, 0, or 0, 0, 0, 1. I want it to show me all those zeros and ones. Then I'm going to take that, print it to the screen, and then I'm going to take that, that string, that binary string apart. And the 0 or 1 will tell me it should be lit or not lit. And we know that if we use the value function for an LED, value 0 means off and value 1 means on. So we've got everything we need by taking apart the binary number into those four digits in properly aligning them to our LEDs that will turn it on and off based on uh, the number we are is my num in, as decimal. Then we'll sleep and we'll just keep going through the loop until we do that keyboard interrupt and turn everything off. Let's run this version of the program. All right, we're off and counting. Looks like it's working correctly. Seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, back to zero. Let's exit, exit using our control C. And you see that we came back to uh, the prompt cleanly, all our LEDs went off. So that try and accept is a nice way of exiting your MicroPython program. I want to thank you for joining me in this project. Until next time.